just rolled out of bed, got a question from the coaching group, should I quit university, We've got a student, We've got a, a young Norwegian guy uh, from my coaching group and he's studying music and he's been doing it, he says he feels like an imposter, he feels like it's not really him, he feels like he's not really getting to say what he wants to say on his path, should he stay on it or should he quit and focus on you know, talking about veganism and various topics he's passionate about. Definitely, dude. Like, quit. Like, <laughs> if you're not enjoying it, if if <laughs> if it's not giving you music, like, like, I can wake up, just just get out of bed and just talk and you know educate because that's my passion, that's my life purpose. You could wake me up at 3 a.m. and ask me questions about. Like, oh, okay, well, okay, well, you know, but don't do that. <laughs> Let me get some sleep. But yeah, I'm saying you could. You know, like it's like when I went to the Woodstock Fruit Festival back in the day. We didn't run my own festivals. People are like, how are you talking from like 6 a.m. till midnight with no stems? Just cranking it out. Just for sugar, water, and fruits. Because it's my passion. You know what I mean? It's my passion. Like, stems, <clears throat> stems will help me do more, but they don't help me live my passion in terms of like finding my passion because that, that comes from within. Like, the, the ultimate stimulant, if you need stems to do something, it's not for you. Like, if I'm doing taxes or stuff I find really just blah, mind-numbly boring, then stims help me do that, okay? So that's a great one as well. If you need stims to do what you're doing, you're doing the wrong thing, all right? Now, if you use a micro dose or a quarter dose to enhance a few percent, okay, different. Like if you're a runner and you want to get extra 10 seconds or 20 seconds faster, okay, get it. But if you need stims to exercise, if you need stims to talk to a certain person, if you need stims to do blah, 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 it's the wrong thing for you, okay? So that's a, that's why I tell people remove all stimulants from your your, from your, your your body. What does stimulants mean? Some people think sugar's a stimulant. Sugar's not a stimulant. Sugar's a nutrient, all right? Stimulant. Hang on, this, this uh, smoke alarm's going off. Natasha's in the hot shower. Um, if you need stims, like have a break from stims. Caffeine, cacao, Adderall, Ritalin, Methylphenidate. Modafinil, all the stims just go for a few months or years without them. I did a period from 2000, 2005 to 2011, no stims. Actually, a little bit of cacao here and there, raw chocolate back in the day. Um, but yeah, I recommend doing that, like just cutting. And then you wake up, you're like, oh, next day, you're like, oh, oh, what's going on, man? You know, you, you only have energy for things you really want to do, alright? <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. This whole society is built on stimulants, and then getting people to believe sugar is bad for you. So then they need even more stimulants, and then they feel even worse. And that, that makes dollars, man. Like, if, if people are fat and sick and tired and depressed, think of how much money they generate for various economies. You know? Think of how much money I generate for various economies. Banana industry, sugar industry, secondhand bike industry. That's about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's you know rice industry, white rice industry, you know, dates. Always have dates on my hand. Always have my ginger on hand. Or I always have my sugars around me. Always. People say, oh, I hang out during ride, I didn't eat much. You just drank. And it's like, what was in the water bottle? Ah, sugar. 500 grams of sugar in there. Drew and I didn't have a meal. He doesn't eat much. <laughs> I had 500 grams of sugar in my friggin' drink bottle. That's why I could talk all day. Like, you, you, you can't give without feeling yourself. You, you'll burn out. You'll hate it. You won't like it. Even if you are passionate about it, you're like, oh, I can't do that. You know, it's just like if you see the elite runners taking all the drugs and doing all the training, the elite swimmers taking all the drugs and all the training, if they don't have enough sugar, bye bye. Performance, bye bye. They want to perform, but they can't. Not enough sugar. So, yeah, we live in a world now, if you promote sugar, you are crazy. You're deemed insane, like Dr. McDougall just did a video that today, I think, uploaded today. Our oh, sugar's not too bad. Like, even he is scared of social disapproval. That's crazy. So, dude, like, you know, you're on the program, you're on the right path, just quit, man, just bail out. All right, if, if, if you're not feeling the joy, get out. Like, out. And it's not because you're fifth, and there's a difference between not feeling the joy because you're undernourished, of carbohydrate and underslept, that's, that's the difference, like, right? if you've got low dopamine, low serotonin, because your diet's deficient, deficient in sugar, a diet deficient in sugar equals low dopamine, equals low serotonin, 
and then you're losing the lo- just the joy for life, then that's not, you know, that's your nutrition that's at fault. Does that make sense? Like, I love cycling. I love helping people get fit and healthy. I love that. But if I don't get enough sugar, that love goes down because I don't have as much hormones and dopamine and serotonin to share. So, you know, if you don't get enough early nights, your motivation drops a lot. So understand the distinction between an endocrinological drop in motivation versus a spiritual drop in motivation. Where you're like, this is really isn't me anymore, you know? Versus, I've got the energy for this, but it's not really who I, what I believe in. Hey. It's cat fights. Johnny, fix the situation, Johnny. Johnny, we're up here. We're above us, Johnny. <laughs> Roxy. Leave baby face alone. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing watching cats. Johnny, get up there. Oh, Johnny to the rescue. Little Tomcat's gonna save her. <laughs> oh man, this, this cat. You learn so much about cats and women from cats. This is Johnny the little Tomcat. He's an amazing cat, like, damn, like, you know, if you think cats don't have personalities. Whew. I never knew cats could be so, uh, so amazing personalities. His little dissex tomcat is very, very rambunctious. These cats have definitely taught me the importance of eating low fat in terms of allergies, because I've had a severe cat allergy all my life, and these cats have driven it in home to me that excess dietary fat really is a driver of allergic reactions, especially if you have any allergies to cat fur or pollen, etc. Just cut your fat right down and watch the whole whole the reality change there. But anyway, get out of it. Get out of the get out of the university life. If it's not for you, man, quit quit just get out you know just quit the quitter life like that's for me it's quitting in life if you're doing something because that's what your parents want you to do like if you're doing something because that's what your partner wants you to do or whatever I mean there's a fine line there you know like tidy your room if you're just living with someone be respectful obviously but if if you're working if you're going to your job every day just to put food on the table but you hate that job quit man quit like you don't have to, like, you guys can get a van and sleep in the van, right? The, the most bratty kids I know are the ones who have the most wealthy parents, right? Well, most wealthy parents. Like, I, I live in an extremely affluent uh, suburb, one of the most expensive real estates in the world. Um, most people around here are in massive debt. I'm not, I own my place, zero debt. But I hear what goes on with the neighbours, you know, the teenage daughter and the teenage son, or... You know, the cops next door over around the other day, the lady apparently punched the daughter in the face, you know, allegedly, according to the daughter. Um, but you don't know what to believe, but the cops are there, and it's just like, damn, I'm like, the house is like home and garden style, you know, they've got a brand new Audi and all that, you know. Um, but the kids, I, I just know the kids aren't getting, you know, I know the, the parents would be doing calories and calories out, and one of them smoking cigarettes, and they'd be on the caffeine to try and lose weight and stuff, and just like, as the average person in the, affluent suburbs is, unfortunately. Um, that's no character judgment, but it's just like, people just follow that that model. You know, you got to stay in university and got to get the job and press your parents and blah, 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 blah. And all that does is leads to broken people who have broken kids and then have broken relationships with those kids. And then those kids go and break things <laughs> elsewhere. You know, like, the worst thing you can do for your kids, I would say, is have a lot of money. Because then those kids have a lot of expectation and pressure. And then they're like, just, just, yeah, all the people I know with kids who have money, they're not, the kids aren't doing that really well, cause they've got anxiety, or they've got eating disorders, or they've got this, and they've got that, and it's, it's their parents to, to, to blame, primarily, because, you know, your parents to blame primarily, because the parents aren't only there for the kids, because the parents got to work such crazy hours or high stress to have this bling, bling, bling. So, anyway, but no, quit, man, quit the uni, just get out. Like, it's just, it's not worth it. And same with jobs, like, I couldn't work in the bike industry today, you know, like a bike shop. Because one, you're dealing with a lot of people who are just arrogant and just don't understand that disc brake road is just crap compared to rim brake. Um, you know, and then they come back with the bike, like, oh, I've got these problems with it. So I told you, dude, I told you road disc is just dumb, you know? It's just dumb. <laughs> like, it's just, it's going to rub, okay? You're going to have problems with it. Um, it's going to be extra expense, extra weight, not as fast, not as nippy feeling. I told you that before we bought it, you know. You know, it's just like, 
so I couldn't I couldn't work in a bike shop anymore. I couldn't work in a bike shop anymore. Um, even though I love bikes, okay. Um, even servicing bikes, I wouldn't want to work on someone's disc brake road bike. You serve, it goes out the door perfect, comes back. Oh, it's still rubbing. The rotor's still rubbing. So, oh man, you know, like this rim brake bike here. I can just build and strip that bike in like half an hour now. You know, have it dialed. So uh, these cats are still coming at it. <laughs> you got to get into what you're into, man. You know what I mean? You got to get into what you're into. And if that's being a YouTuber, this guy wants to be a YouTuber, hey, do it. Like, you know, if you like money and fame and feeling significant, YouTube is the job for you. And if you're aligning with what you are passionate about with what you're promoting, pff, that's where it's at, all right? And, and, uh, but people think money and fame will make them happy and glowy looking. And look at most people out there that I helped up over the years, the ones who've flipped on me. Look how depressed they look today. They got mad money. Right? Some of them got more, way more money than I have. They're earning, you know, earning some bank. They pretend they don't, but they are. But look how sad all of them look, right? Compared to maybe 2016 when they had less money and fame. Look how glowy and like, you know, starry eyed they look back in the day versus now. Because you know, how they got there today was not a nice way to do it, um, you know. And they're not really passionate about what they do to talk about. It's just they're like, oh, this I can make money here, I get fame here, so I'll do that. But they don't really believe what they're educating, or they like. Maybe they believe it, but they know that that's not who they are. <laughs> and so, I, I really encourage people is like, go totally drug free, you know, no weed, no mushrooms, no ayahuasca, none of that stuff. Just super low fat, just do my protocols and that will expand your mind you know, we're out in nature in the fresh air, that's why I have an outdoor office it's just, you know I'm sitting under a plum tree here and you know, things just work differently when you're out there in nature just quit man, like just just today, you know you, but oh, my parents have paid all this money for university fuck it man, your parents just want you to be happy, then if you're going to become a stoner and just go, hey man just go with the spirit, yeah no man, that's that's bullshit. All right, you, you, you're not gonna, nah, no way, man. Like you're gonna sit around and get stoned every day, just like, oh, oh, like, and and live off your parents' money. Like, fuck, dude, that's fucking whoever's doing that, man. That's that's beta as fuck. You know, or you're gonna live off your your girlfriend's money, or your boyfriend's money, and go, oh god, yeah, 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 yeah. like you just been a parasite. We're all adults here. The world's got a lot of problems. We all gotta pull our way to help. So you fix up some of them problems, highlight those problems and be a part of the pollution versus part of the solution. So yeah, quit today, quit out man, and just work like relentlessly at what you're passionate about, man. Put in the effort, put in the work. Um he's like, Oh, I think he, the the guy said, um, the lad said, I'm worried about, you know, what people think of me, my YouTube channel's small <laughs> and and like that, that that's great that you're honest with me like me like that. Like that's great that you're honest with me. And I'll laugh and stuff, but it's so good that you're honest with me like that because then I'll give you the best advice. If you don't even have a YouTube presence and you already care too much what people think, imagine when you do have a YouTube presence and someone says, You're a rapist or you're a fraud or you're this or you're that or blah, blah, blah. like you, you gotta you gotta probably gonna jump off a cliff, alright? <laughs> you won't be able to handle the heat. Alright? Because when you get more money and fame you know, haters gonna come for you because they wanna clout off that. That's just the world we live in. So if you can't handle, you know, like it's like going to the gym. If you can't handle the, just the bar, you know, no weights, just the bar. You're on the bench press and you're doing, you know, you're doing bent over rows or you're doing arm curls with just the bar. You're like, oh, I can't handle this. It's like you're not gonna progress and progress. Like that's just how it is. You know, so most of us are too emotionally injured, you know, and we're not gonna do anything to to reverse those injuries. We keep repaying them in our head. We keep emotionally injuring ourselves. Well, this happened to me when I was a kid and I got rejected and blah, 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 blah. And we, we keep doing the injury again and again and again. You know? It's like, just so you, you keep repeating stuff in your head that's, that's negative, that's not really serving you, then you're, you're your biggest enemy. Um, so yeah, this, this, is, this is a video not just for this specific person, this is a video for many, many people out there. Um, so no, it's a great question, Sig, and I applaud you for questioning your current life path. You know, that's, that's fantastic. Like a lot of people, oh, you, you've got schizophrenia, you're having a mental breakdown, you're having a psychosis, and it's like, no, those things only happen when we start doing drugs, right? 
if you're staying away from drugs, you can't enter into the schizophrenia or whatever. But as soon as you start smoking weed, start doing stims, you know, you will. That's where people. That's what kicks off psychosis. All right. If you no cigarettes, no caffeine, no alcohol, no weed, no stims, no prescription or street stimulants or anything like that, you can't have psychosis. You know, unless you do a water fast. <laughs> And yet, if you're having sugar and water and going to bed 9, 10 p.m., you can't, you'll be your skits, your psychosis proof. Okay, so all the people I know who went into psychosis, they did the whole I'm going to do a fast and I'm going to eat less, I'm going to do a dry fast, and some of them died, but they all, all of them went mentally fucked like mental wards, just off the deep end, man, in a bad way. Like, if I say you're crazy, then you're really crazy, all right, and I'm, I'm a very open minded person, all right. If I say you're crazy, <laughs> you, then you're definitely crazy. <laughs> and that's only because you just short circuit, you just, you crash your dopamine, you crash your serotonin, like, and just pff, went, you know, your neuro, hormonal pathway is just, pff, just jumbled from your behavior. Not because of some genetic thing or whatever, it's your behavior. So avoid that, people just, yeah. That, that's what happens is when people have free time, then they're getting drugs. And it's all downhill from there. You know, it's all downhill from there. Like, if you can do drugs, like, you know, once a month or once a year, or what do I mean by drugs? Even like a quarter dose, like a micro dose or something. Then okay, if you've if you've done years without anything, you, you got that control, right? You understand the limits. Then yeah, but if you're in your twenties, just don't even go there, man. Don't even go there. Um, it's just it's just not worth it. I mean, most people would have been there anyway, so we don't, we don't need to go back. Um, you know, like I myself can use drugs because of I don't see myself as like a what's the word? You know, I hmm, like you know I could my identity's not a drug user, right? My identity's helping people. I'm not a, a star athlete. Who has to perform at this stupidly high level? I'm not a, a bodybuilder who's making money off a ripped, massive, swole physique. People come to me because of weight loss information. So, in doing drugs doesn't help that. Uh, doing drugs doesn't make me a better educator. Like, my significance and fame is of my contribution, which comes from within me. And drugs could enhance that for sure, but it's not because of that. So, that's why I find it easy for me to go months and months without any stims because, uh, yeah, yeah, it's good to. Have those times where you don't have anything so you can really get the deep sleep. If you're doing stims every day, you can't sleep properly. You just can't. You can't. Even if you're doing a microdose of modafinil or um, Adderall or whatever, you can't sleep. Right? So people, oh, I've been on it every day for the last 10 years. It's like, <laughs> yeah, man, like you need to have a, you need to have a, have a stop, have a break, so you can get some, some deep sleep. But if I, don't, if I just stop the stims, Harley, I, I can't turn up to work in that job I hate. It's like, money won't make you happy, man. It'll, it'll, money can bring material shit that can give you joy and fun and you can floss and flex and finesse around with other people but it won't, won't bring you happiness if money and fame if you think if you think that you need money and fame to be happy look at all the Hollywood celebs look at Justin Bieber you think Justin Bieber looks happy looking compared to 2008 when he's a junior and he's like well just super like hey. now he's just like you know look at all the Xanax man look at all the the most rich people I know, financially rich people I know, addicted to Xanax, etc. I'd used a Xanax uh, last year, like I was a quarter tab or a half tab. I thought, oh, I just want to try what, what these are. And I had it, man. I was like, oh, this feels like shit. I couldn't really control my thoughts. I was just like, like a freaking flounder, like a, a flounder, like a mullet that got hit with a freaking barramundi tail. I just felt, you know, it's like, what the fuck? I was just like, I, I went for a run just to try and flush it out of my system during these awards. I get this dirty feeling, like, ugh. I like to be able to feel my emotions, man. <laughs> but that, I was thinking, man, this, that's fucking, that's cooked if you have to have that stuff every day. Or be stoned every day. It's just like, I could not do that. I could not do that. I couldn't do stims every day because I value my sleep too much. Um, I can't even do a full dose of stims. You know, like, when I've used the Ritalins or the Modafinils or whatever, the prescription stimulants, like, one time I, I took the full tab, and I was like, mm. I was like, no, 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 that's not good. So a quarter dose is, is way more than enough for me, if I ever have them. 
um, which I don't recommend having those really in your 20s like like because if, if you don't have that self-control then you start to align that as a crutch all right and if you can't do something natty I think you should be able to do something natty before you use anything and even then don't use stuff all right? I'm just being honest and transparent about so um, because I, I'd, I'd say only one percent of the population really can handle their drugs and then do them in a way that's not abusive to their sleep routine. But again, a lot of people that listen to me at this point, um, or the podcast, I should say. But man, get out of it, man. Just do YouTube. And people say, oh, you can't do that. You know, like, do it, man. Like, live on the street, collect cans, do whatever, you, whatever you're passionate about. Like, recycle, pick up trash off the beach, go volunteer in Asia. Like, <laughs> you're an English-speaking, Norwegian-speaking person. You know, like, just go out there and do it, man. Like, you've got so much opportunity. Like, don't waste your privilege. Don't waste that privilege. Don't waste opportunity. The privilege everybody has is that we're alive, you know? And, and no matter where we live, we've all got privileges, and we should make the most of that, you know? Whether you're dark skin or white skin, like, you know, you, you have, we have privileges, whether you're male or female or shorter or taller or skinny or fat or you have we have privileges we have opportunities because of our position so make sure you maximize that for your own benefit but also for the benefit of those around you uh, if you're doing something and only you only you win don't do it if you're doing something that you win and other people win then that's what you should do every single day you know if the planet wins i should say if the planet wins then you should do that um but yeah that's yeah anyways that's the little recap there but man, I see it every day. I look around. I'm just thinking, fuck, man. Like, how do people work in these jobs they hate? Like, just just out of social obligation, fear of judgment from their parents, fear of judgment from their peers, or, or they have, you know, they're, or they're competitive with someone. You know, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to earn more money. I'm going to get the best Porsche. I'm going to get the latest Porsche, and you know, and then they just they're, they're just driven by anger, and, and anger is good to have, like you know, a bit of fire and like. But if if anger is your main fuel. Man, you, you, your life's going to be fucking angry. <laughs> that's that's going to be your primary emotion is anger. And that's going to, well, yeah, anger, man. Like, anger's good like in, in, in as a condiment here and there. But if that's your main calorie source emotionally, that's going to suck. My uh, calorie source, my emotional calorie source, my main one is gratitude. Gratitude, that's what gets, that's my fuel. Like, I wake up every day and go, damn, I'm alive. I need to die in my sleep. Okay, today's gonna to be a good day. Let's go do some stuff. Let's go do. Let's go leave some legacy today. If you're not, if you're not leaving legacy every day, or if I'm not, if I'm not leaving legacy every day, I'm like, I wasted my day. You know, I wasted my day. So contribution, uh, that's my drive. Gratitude's my emotional fuel. Legacy, that's like leaving legacy for the planet, for the people around you, for the animals. For me, that's the, that's the main one. You know, legacy, contribution, and gratitude. When you bounce in between those three f focuses, emotions, whatever you want to call it. It's like a rotary, rotary motor. It's like legacy, contribution, gratitude, bouncing around. Some people are bouncing around obligation, anger, <laughs> jealousy, <laughs> um, bitterness, spitefulness. You know, that's, that's their like, that's their little motor. They're pinging off from bitterness to anger to resentment to obligation. <laughs> and you see in their eyes, they got this like big dark circles in their eyes, and they just like they look really angry. You know, they look angry. It's like, man, you gotta you got change your fuel source, man. You gotta change your fuel source to you know gratitude, contribution, legacy, you know. And then all of a sudden your fa whole face lights up. We all get older, man. But it's how we it's that that emotion that we show in our face, that's who we are. You see people walking around like they look, they look like a a downward blow, not that. You know, that's that they're running on a freaking rotary motor of bitterness, spitefulness, resentment, anger, <laughs> ungrateful, entitlement, excessive self entitlement. It's like <laughs> so. Yeah, what we wear in our what our, our primary thoughts are based on our behaviours every day, how we treat people. Our true people in the past. Do we make amends? Do we apologise publicly? Do we make amends? Those things show on our face. You can't Botox it. You can't Photoshop it out. It's there forever until we change.
I'll stop here.